and this is the uh, Golden Age project, EQ81 MK3. It is a hardware EQ, so it's the only hardware EQ I've ever had, but I find it quite useful. I used to be uh, often looking at microphones in particular, because each microphone has its own sonic signature, and ever since I've gotten this device, which is about the price of a mid-price microphone, you know, it's about 400 euros here over in Europe, uh, I'm not looking for microphones anymore because I, it gives me so much versatility with how I can shape the input of the mics I have. So I just thought I'd run through it and talk to you about uh, its features and then also tell you how I've been using it and what I think of it. This is the, uh, the power button over here, and it's a four-band parametric EQ. So uh, here are the knobs that give the, the level of boost or cut for each EQ. And then you have a bunch of frequencies for each of the bands that you can select. So on the low frequencies here, we have, for example, a... Uh, it starts it... you can turn it off if you want. All of them can be turned off, which is great. And uh, it starts at 33 hertz, 56, 100, 180, and 330, which can be a boost or a cut of a notch filter, but it can also turn into a shelf, so a low shelf or a high shelf, which just gives this device great versatility. The uh, high frequency is also either a notch or a shelf. But I'll go through the frequencies just quickly. And uh, so here we have the uh, uh, the low mid, which also has a switch for high Q. Uh, high Q means a narrower notch. So this is a notch that can be switched from a wider notch to a narrower notch. And here we have all the way from off to 220, 270, 330, 390, 470, 560, 680, and 820, 1 kilohertz, 1.2K, and 1.6K. There, there's a lot of possibilities in this device. And uh, so we have similar things here for the high mid with a, uh, a, a switch that will allow you to uh, narrow the notch. And uh, quite a few frequencies. I'll just go through them quickly. Off, of course. 1.5K, 1.8K, 2.2, 2 2.7, 3.3, 3.9, 4.7, 5.6, 6.8, 8.2, and 10K. And then we have a, um, a treble uh, frequency here, which can either, like I said, be a shelf or a notch, either booster cut, of course. And here we have either 3K, 4K, 6K, 10K, 15K, or off. So those are basically the features. Uh, in previous versions, I didn't mention it, in previous versions, they only allowed this device to work as an insert with some of the gap preamps. And the reason that I bought this, because I was tempted in the past, is because now with the MK3 version, uh, you can use this with any preamp. It has line level ins and outs on the back. Uh, but you can also use it as an insert with your uh, gap preamp if you want to do that. So best of both worlds there. Will you be around when I return again? And will you hold your ground when old love sheds its skin and will you be around when i return again and will you hold your ground when old love sheds its skin and will you be around when i return again and will you hold your ground when old love sheds its skin and will you be around, be around? 
When I return again And will you hold your ground When old love sheds its skin And will you be around When I return again And will you hold your ground When old love sheds its skin And will you be around When I return again And will you hold your ground When old love Sheds its skin and will you be around when I return again? And will you hold your ground when old love sheds its skin and will you be around? When I return again And will you hold your ground When old love sheds its skin And will you be around When I return again And will you hold your ground when old love sheds its skin And will you be around When I return again And will you hold your ground When old love sheds its skin And will you be around when I return again And will you hold your ground When old love sheds its skin And will you be around When I return again and will you hold your ground when old love sheds its skin? And will you be around when I return again? And will you hold your ground when old love? Sheds its skin and will you be around when I return again? And will you hold your ground when old love sheds its skin and will you be around? When I return again And will you hold your ground When old love sheds its skin And will you be around When I return again and will you hold your ground when old love sheds its skin? And will you be around when I return again? And will you hold your ground?
Now I'll just uh, go through what I think of this device. I already got into it a little bit. And the main thing that I use it for is for uh, things that I use a mic for, either uh, live percussion or vocals or acoustic guitars. Usually when I record a bass or a guitar, I find that uh, there are enough tonal options that I don't even bother to go through this thing. So if you're mainly recording guitars or mainly recording basses, uh, maybe it's not worth it. But if you use microphones a lot, you use a lot of uh, uh, microphones to either, like I said, mic, mic up in your room, uh, vocals, acoustic instruments, or uh, uh, percussion, uh, then I really find this great because you can basically transform, uh, not totally of course, every mic has its sonic signature that stays somewhat, but you can transform the sound of your microphone quite significantly through the amazing amount of options here. Uh, this is sort of a mid-priced piece of equipment which goes uh, quite well with uh, the... Uh, I have a preamp right next to it made by Golden Age Project, which I use a lot, which I speak about in my videos. It's the uh, GAP uh, Pre-73 uh, yeah, Pre DLX, which I also use all the time. These are sort of mid-priced uh, hardware equipment uh, that you can use, and they have a similar level of, of quality. They're not uh, top, top studio quality, but they're uh, certainly not beginner or budget quality either. Uh, and so they go, they both go very well together. If you already have uh, Golden Age Project devices, this might be something you want to think about. Uh, but certainly I use it all the time for uh, all of my preamps, including my Dayking Mic Pre 1, which I find to be slightly higher overall in terms of quality than the, uh, the Gap preamp. Uh, a lot of people uh, will say the Dayking Mic Pre 1 is a total pro preamp. I'll leave that up to you to decide. But uh, in any case, uh, it certainly doesn't bring down the level of quality of a, of a preamp like that to my ears. And um, for example, this device, this uh, hardware EQ I've been using all the time in partnership with my uh, Shure KSM32, which uh, is a fairly neutral mic that I find uh, suits a lot of sources. I also like the uh, sound the sonic character of the mic and having an EQ like this just makes the mic so so versatile uh, I've been using the mic even more now that I have this and I would like to, to get to using this on some of my other mics that I've been using less recently uh, I definitely recommend it uh, of course if you have you know two thousand bucks to blow on a totally pro level uh, sounding uh, external EQ. Uh, I'm sure those would probably sound better, but I've never compared, so I can't tell you for sure. In any case, I don't feel like this EQ limits my sonic possibilities or pulls down the level of quality of the gear that I have, which I just described to you uh, somewhat uh, right up above it, for example, I use it with the uh, Warm Audio uh, WA76 and 1176 uh, clone. Uh, I feel like, again, in terms of sonic quality, they pair very nicely together. So there you have it. If you like the video or you got something out of it, please give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, or if you'd like to see more longer videos uh, like I've usually been doing recently with lots of uh, audio samples, uh, subscribe to my channel.